Hi and welcome to Off the Beaten Tracks, the show that's sweeter than a honeybee's ass and only half the calories. Hello and welcome to Off the Beaten Tracks. Today I'm going to do some albums I picked up mostly from uh, Sonic Boom, which I haven't been to many times, it's downtown Toronto, and Cops, which is another great little record store on Queen Street. And we'll begin right after this. So this is the first album I'm going to be doing. This is Cairo, A History of Reasons from 2014. Uh, they're a Canadian band, uh, I believe, uh, from Vancouver. This is their debut, and in fact, their only album. Uh, it's been described as Sonic Soundscapes. I don't know whether that's actually true. They kind of the songs kind of remind me of a Remy, Remy Zero approach, where they they build a lot of them start softly and build crescendos, and the the vocalist uh, Nate Daniel. Uh, has kind of the vocals that handle that kind of soft to hard uh, edge. Uh, he will remind you maybe a tiny bit of uh, Grantley Phillips from the Grantley Buffalo Band back in the, I guess, the late 80s, probably. Um, this is a really good album. I, You know, it's one of those albums that you like right off the bat, and then it improves with time. Uh, there are a bunch of really good songs on this, and I'm going to put uh, a couple of videos at the bottom so you'll be able to hear them yourself. Um, the reason that there's probably no more albums from this band after this stellar uh, debut is that Nate himself, in, in an interview, said that, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something to do with the hallucinogenics that he had gladly imbibed. And the band apparently had a, a very hard time with uh, drugs, booze, and mental illness. And I guess they eventually uh, collapsed under the, the weight of those uh, disabilities. Now, on the upside, uh, Nate and Dante Bernardi Jr. Uh, from the band uh, went on and have recently formed a band called uh, Tomboy. And I also have uh, one of their videos at the bottom. Um, a little unusual, the video, but the song is good, and um, I would certainly recommend this album heartily. Uh, one of those great little uh, finds. Um, did not know these people before uh, I picked this up, but I do not regret doing so. This is my next album. This is by Dappled Cities. It's called Zounds. It's your third album. That's probably explains the big inflatable three up there, but who wouldn't want a big inflatable three, let's face it. Um, they're from Australia. Uh, this is one of those uh, irritating double albums. Uh, a lot of people kvetch on the VC about these things because every three songs you have to flip it over as opposed to, you know, the regular album and there are no extra songs. There's 12 songs on this. Um, the singer will remind you a little of Chris Caraba from uh, Dashboard Confessional. Uh, the the songs, it, it's not quite pop, it's not quite synth pop. Uh, it's referred to as indie rock in, in Wikipedia. Uh, musically, it's pretty good. Um, songs like The Night is Young at Heart are quite good, but I think what separates this from a lot of bands is the thuddingly stupid and pretentious lyrics. Uh, I can't tell which it is, stupid or pretentious. Uh, there are lines in it so awkward that you can hear the singer tap dancing in his vocals to try and fit it into the musical line. Uh, it just, you know, it's like they've sacrificed the music for these arrhythmic uh, lyrics they've got. And they print them, I believe. Um, let me see here. Um, here they are. So if you want to see how uh, completely, uh, thuddingly uh, pretentious and stupid they are, they are inside. Uh, they put out two albums after this. The last one was called I, 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 I from 2017. Again, I have songs at the bottom. You can judge for yourself exactly what you think of the lyrics and the music of this album. I would give it probably a five, 
wouldn't be an album I put on very often, though I have, you know, just for the sake of this video, I have, I've listened to this a couple of times. So this is the oldest record that I'm going to do today. This is Doctor's Mob. This is Heartache Machine. This is from 1985. These guys were from Austin, Texas, and were named after the first uh, recorded American riot in 1728. Uh, that is recorded in the legal books, obviously not in the recording studio. Uh, their approach to showbiz sounds an awful lot to me like The Replacements. Their motto was show up drunk, show up late, or don't show up at all. They were considered a new sincerity band, and apparently they uh, did not like being lumped in with them, but hmm, such is show business. There was a lot of squabbling in this uh, band of drunks, and in fact the uh, bass player quit halfway through uh, supporting this album. They did do a second album, which I do not have yet. I'm very interested in it. It's called Sophomore Slump. It was done for Relativity Records. This one is on one big guitar. And it was produced by the Ramones producer, Tommy Erdele. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I apologize to Tommy. Uh, but they, So they recorded this album, and Relativity Records, I wouldn't say had the standards of, say, a Decca or a Deutsche Gramophone, didn't like it. They made them record the entire album a second time and delayed the release by seven months. Uh, which pretty well, from what I've read, put the kibosh on the band. It kind of just sucked all the air out of it. The um, singer in this band is called is named Stephen Collier, and he will remind you with his vocals and some of the music will remind you a little of Translator. So if you like some of those Translator albums from the uh, from the eighties, you'll probably like this. I did like this. I would give it a seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and three quarters. I, I don't know if I'd put it up to an eight. Uh, the one thing that I did notice the first time listening to this is the lyrics are very hard to make out. Um, I did, uh, on subsequent listens, I, I, I maybe more concentration, uh, I did manage to make out what they were singing about. Uh, really like this. These are good pop songs. Um, I would, I would give this, yes, definitely go pick this up if you see a copy at a reasonable price. And, uh, if you do, uh, get to hear Sophomore Slump, please let me know what it's like, because I'm certainly curious. My next album is Fake Tears. This is Night Shifting from 2015. Uh, these are these uh, gals are Canadian on, on Mint Records. Uh, this is Larissa Loiva and Alicia May Rimbold. Uh, these guys have a uh, quite a musical history. They've been in a ton of bands before forming Fake Tears. Uh, they originally got together in another band called Lost Lovers. They wanted to make Fake Tears, kind of a, a woman's supergroup, and they originally had five members, but apparently nobody could get along, and it just went back to the two of them. So this is kind of uh, synth poppy, but without those big hooks you usually associate with pop music. Um, it starts off with a piece that you might have heard on the Battlestar Galactica series, the second one, uh, just ethereal, kind of interesting. Uh, there are a lot of 80s sounding keyboards in this and soaring harmonies, which I guess is their, their calling card. Uh, first time it didn't really hit me, but eventually you kind of start going, okay, that's kind of interesting. You know, again, I don't know, I don't know if they made a second album, but one album of this kind of stuff might be sufficient for them. Uh, orchestral maneuvers in the dark is one of the things that you might uh, think of when you hear the keyboards on this. In spots, uh, like my first impression, was this was ABBA on downers or the roaches without the sense of humor. But as I say, with repeated listenings, this quite grew on me. And on a very nice uh, kind of greenish, I'll pull this out so you can even see it, so it's vaguely greenish, but it looks totally uh, see-through there. The problem with these, when you buy albums like this and secondhand, and I tend to buy uh, blind buy secondhand because I'd rather pay six, seven dollars for something as opposed to thirty dollars for it in case you know it's it's a piece of crap. But with a, with an album like this, 
you just could not see the scratches. I mean, say what you want about how ugly or pretty you think black vinyl is. At least when you hold it up to the light, you can see the scratches. You hold this up to any kind of light, and it just looks like a nice, pretty album. You can't see them unless, I guess, they were gouged in there. So that's my only uh, cavil, if you will, about uh, that kind of uh, pretty uh, vinyl to use on these records. So I would give Fake Tears six and a half or so. One of those albums, maybe even going into seven, seven and a half, it's if you consider it to be your Sunday morning album over coffee and regret. My next album is called uh, from a band called Loftus. This was made in 1999, but wasn't released until this year. Uh, it's on Jealous Butcher Records. Now, this is a combination, a kind of indie supergroup, if you will, uh, from the indie rock bands Rex, Red Red Meat, and Tortoise. Uh, Discogs calls this experimental folk. Uh, this was limited to 521 copies on either maroon vinyl or clear vinyl. I got the clear. And it was apparently uh, recorded at a truck stop. And they said that... There were trucks pulling in uh, to this truck shop while they were recording, and if they were out for a break or something, they'd be opening up these trucks to, I guess, weigh them or look at what the contents are. And, the, you know, if it was a pig truck or something, blood would flow out of these things all over the, all over the sidewalk. Um, they were signed to a label, and then the label went bankrupt, and that's why this was never put out. Uh, the songs started out as improvisations and were built into songs in the studio. So they just kind of ramble around and somebody say, well, I like that bit, I like that bit. And then they would eventually, you know, coalesce into, into actual, I wouldn't, you know, I guess there are some tunes. I wouldn't call them literally tunes on this because this is not immediately appealing. I did notice that I liked it more the second and third time. Uh, I, and I, I just went to L.A. recently, and I did put this on in the airplane, and believe me, that kind of place, that kind of venue is no place to listen to this album. It's just too sparse, and, you know, even though I had the uh, noise-reducing headphones on, it didn't help. This is something you really, really have to listen to. I would describe this um, as the Weavers if you gave them all the bad acid from Woodstock. This is the kind of album they would come up with. Um, boy, what would I give it? If you like really experimental kind of stuff, you might go with seven and a half to eight. I would probably give this a six and a half. Uh, my initial reading of this was probably like a five. But, you know, again, you really have to put the headphones on and give this a listen. And then you go, oh, I, I can see I like this and I like this. So, it, again, it's one of those albums that grows on you uh, unless you uh, put it down this way. I don't know whether this jawbone here, by the way, is from one of the trucks uh, at the stop they recorded this at. Uh, this was a blind buy from Sonic uh, Boom. Uh, I really like this cover. I'm sure there was probably a little hype sticker up here at some point because who the hell knows what this band is. Uh, on the back, there it is, Golden Bears, Are You Falling In Love. Uh, this is on Slumberland Records. These are guys from uh, Portland, Oregon. I think this album is going to remind you a little of Guided By Voices. So if you kind of like that uh, tuneful lo-fi uh, vibe, this is right up your alley. Um, somebody on the internet called it crash pop and I think that's a very apt description because again it has really um, nice tunes uh, there is a, um, a a lyric sheet with this and I think you're gonna need it at least for the first few listens uh, just to get have them cut through the the kind of the bombast the the fuzz guitars and things but uh, again this is well worth it, well worth this album, even if you don't know who it is when you buy it. Okay.
Okay.